Hey! We're live. <laughs> Yay! And hopefully people will keep dripping in as we go along. Keep an eye on that waiting list and see if anyone's... Uh... Yeah, there was a few. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, 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 look at this. We just Yay! got the people inside. An exciting oh, input. Oh my God. Look at this. Oh, it's O'Connell. <laughs> Andrew. And Ed. Hello. Hello. Oh my gosh. Welcome, right. welcome. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Hi! Wait, we've got an Ed as well. Is that correct? Oh, no. So many of you should get. Yes, no. there's that an Ed actually... there. Ooh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. This is me. awesome. Um, and for people who just came in, this is currently recording. Be aware. You can swear. Oh, Maybe don't shitty. like slander anyone in particular. <laughs> Um, just a bit of housekeeping. I'm in in like three seconds. I'm going to mute everyone, and if you want to talk, you unmute. Um, I guess you Tom usually takes it away, and I'm kind of in control of the computer stuff in the background. So um, if you're having any problems, yell at me. But uh, I will probably mute you just for the camera because the camera will follow anybody who's talking. So uh, we're gonna mute you, and otherwise. How does one unmute if one wants to unmute? There is a little button in the corner um, that you can see your audio. It has a little green light if it's working. You can also oh. hit the chat to uh, send a direct message to somebody. Right, exactly. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, we're going to mute all from now, except um, Tom, I'm going to unmute you. You can unmute yourself, Tom. Where hey. Cool, okay. Shall we get cracking then, as it seems that people are, are coming in? Yeah. Can everyone hear Tom? Everyone hearing me? Perfect, perfect. Yes. Awesome. So yeah, so we're, we're definitely going to go around because we want everyone's feedback, input into this. Hey, we can see you, Ed. Hello. Um, because yeah, this is a, a spicy one today because we're talking about the F word, the F ball. Um, I guess up top just to say again, so yeah, we are recording this, um, but it's probably going to be, again, a little bit bluer than previous ones. I think everyone has some deeper opinions about it, so don't worry about that. But again, don't make it personal because um, we're going to be putting it out there. I mean, you know all this stuff already. And uh, for people who might be watching who came in through Fushigi or like don't really know about the impact it had. This isn't directed at you, any like bad feelings or kind of resentment people have built up. It's not directed at people who learn this stuff. It's directed at the company and the whole thing behind it. Like this isn't us attacking you. This isn't the kind of old guard attacking people who came in. Um, so yeah, this is just about yeah, we're going to be talking about the impact this thing had and where it came from and uh, how it came about and all that kind of stuff. And um, I guess the way that we can do this, we'll kind of go around the home and talk to each person individually. Um, if you don't, if you just want to listen, if you don't want to dive in, then that's fine. Just let us know. Like you're more than welcome to just, just be around, kick in if you're feeling um, what's going on. Um, so yeah, so what I'll do, I reckon, first of all, um, Dawn, you're still on the, uh, the line here. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, real quick. So if somehow you missed it, in 2010, there was an infomercial that appeared seemingly out of nowhere for the Fushigi Magic Gravity Ball. Um, do you happen to have any of these queued up there? Yeah, I do. You want to see some? Let's see how much we can manage. Of the Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Deep breath, everyone. If you have a drink, now's a good time to get involved. Okay, we're showing the very first one that you just sent me the link. It's here. Yeah. It's wild. It's sweeping the nation. It's Fushigi! Those crystal clear balls. Yeah. So we'll dive into this a little bit, but um, this was the first video they put out. And then they realized that it probably wasn't a good idea to sell these tiny little arson machines to little kids who are gonna just be dotting their houses with highly flammable objects. Well, not flammable objects, but things that will set fire to their house. 
Um, so this is pre-metal ball inside a ball. Um, yeah, and then they jumped on. So they re-recorded. And then they re-recorded again another one, which I don't even know if it went out with um, Street Style Fushigi. This is yeah, so that same commercial. It's amazing. And no one noticed. No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there are some fantastic, like, if you look at the, the safety instructions that they gave with Fujigi, even the, uh, the metal ones, it has things like, um, do not leave in direct sunlight, never use in sunlight, and all these kind of things, like, avoid contact with the body whilst in sun. Like, it immediately says, do not use this product outside. <laughs> Just this is bury not yourself toy. away. It's definitely not a toy. <laughs> Always confusing about like, wait, what is it? It is a ball, obviously, but um, yeah. Okay, okay. Stop. I checking. think I think that's probably about as much as as we can bear from that. Um, so I'm going to throw to you first of all, Don. Um, I guess Don and Brian, being our main and Diz as well, you're kind of our North American Canadian kind of correspondence on this. This is where it hit the hardest, right? Um, so, Dawn, if I kind of throw to you first, just like, where were you when you first heard about this, first saw this, and when did you realize that this was going to be a significant thing in contact? So, yeah, what I remember is, um, you know, I was with Mellers at the time, so it was two contact juggling, busking people, and, and at, the, at first I remember seeing this, I'm like, ah, it's a cheesy commercial, so what, it doesn't really matter, and I don't really remember when that conversation actually started, because I'd blown it off so hard, I was just like, that's not going to affect me at all. <laughs> and then I was really wrong about that, and then that busking season started, and everybody... Um, started calling us a fraud because we were basically uh, going for American tourists and in this Chinese night market that we were working and it uh, was the saddest like heartbreaking uh, busking season that I'd ever had and so when it really impacted me was really when I started getting feedback from people on the street being like oh that just does it on its own so there was that thread on .org first though that was happening and people were talking about it um, but I don't remember being aware of it until way later. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, maybe throwing across to, um, to Teresa, to Diz there, like, how were you, uh, did you re realize this was going to be, did you see it on TV as well, is I guess the other question. Um, you need to unmute, oh yeah, you're there. I never, I, well, I, I had really poor TV reception, it was all antenna and because I lived remotely and I never saw the commercial until like a year later. Um, the only way I would see it is clips on .org and I was like, wow, this is, this gives me a headache. And once in a while I would be at a friend's house and they were having like a Nickelodeon on and the commercial would come on. And I'm like, wow, that's bad. And it was like at 10 times speed too. Like, Everything in the commercial was just sped up. Wow. I didn't even know that. Like it was, it's pretty quick anyway when you're watching it. Um, but yeah, so I'm um, throwing quick down to Brian then, uh, Brian Manili there. So I guess the same kind of thing. Like, um, were you aware of it? I mean, you were aware of it through the forums. Did it have an impact like on TV and as you were performing as well? So I didn't actually have television at the time. That's something that I managed to escape decades ago. Um, but the impact was just almost immediate. I was living outside of Boston at the time. And um, just you just couldn't be anywhere practicing. You couldn't go practice in a park. Um, there was no more like, you know, carrying a ball around and just kind of having fun because people were just constantly jumping on it just oh it's that thing from from tv it's that fish thing and um you know and then i started seeing it on the forums really impacting people i know don and ryan you had your lives drastically impacted by it um and i luckily quickly though maybe not quickly enough made it over to europe that's when i moved to norway and norwegians don't care about american <laughs> advertising so i was I was still able to go out and, you know, do some markets and do some busking and have a positive 
reaction to it where in America, anytime you went out in the street, people just, oh, it's that thing from TV. And it was just, it was immediately dismissed. It, it was really heartbreaking actually to see, um, just, just to see how it's affecting people and taking away that magic from the performers practicing this art form and immediately just saying, oh, it's some magical TV product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think this is definitely a thing that we'll talk about more, but just how, especially in North America, it kind of still is in the mindset. Of it. it is still this, um, it has this, this cachet, this kind of place that people think about Fujigi, and it brings up this very kind of tacky image um, that they, well, for some reason, really went for. Luckily, it's really slowed down. Around 2013, you started to notice a decline. And I actually really got into club passing at the time. And I think it was a bit of being disheartened with it so much. But, you know, I started busking again in like late 2013, 2014. And you would hear it every day, a couple times a day, but it wasn't every single person. Like, it had finally started to work its way out of the collective conscious. And I think now, at least on the West Coast, in the Pacific Northwest anyway, people have almost no recollection you'll you'll every once in a while you'll get a comment now oh it's that thing that that something thing right that ball it's that ball from tv and you can pretty easily convince these people that it's actually an art form rather than some kids toy which breaks the laws of physics see that's an interesting thing like they actually they went back when they refilmed that second commercial they took out the line that it was a magic gravity ball presumably because again they saw on the horizon a lot of angry parents looking for refunds from them that it didn't float by itself. Um, like, interesting little, so doing a bit of Google Trends search, I know Google, Google Trends isn't the most kind of accurate or specific thing, but for the kind of wider view of how these things go, it's quite interesting. I'm looking at this huge spike in 2010 for Fushigi searches. There's a big one when they had the first commercial, there's a big one when they had the second one, and then there's kind of a half one at Christmas as well, as everyone opened these Fushigi balls and was like, what is this thing that I've got? And kind of correlating that with contact juggling, there's this kind of minute little spike of interest in contact juggling at the same time. But what's interesting with that, compare that spike to um, Okatampe's video going viral. That's almost twice as large. He got that one video or in more attention, almost twice as much attention to contact juggling than the entirety of that Fushigi marketing like explosion just kind of showing like, here's this, like if you actually demonstrate it properly and show a really interesting version of it, you get the results, you get people kind of tying back in. Yeah, um, I was gonna say like, like Okatampe like, had some skill others. though. <laughs> yeah, exactly, like here is this incredibly clean, incredibly um, easy to understand version. It's not quick cuts, it's a single cut. That video, I don't think there's any cuts in it at all because it's just someone filming him in the park. You don't need all the hyperkinetic jumps and editing and things. Was that the JCJC video? Yeah, exactly, exactly. The the big one that went viral kind of early on. But yeah, it's just an interesting like little thing that I noticed. It's like Fushigi had this huge push, and it's a term that's already around. Like there's a there's a manga um, that's by the same name, uh, well Fushigi Yugi, which I think also like kind of bolsters the search results a little bit. But um, you can see these very clear trends kind of poking through. Um, just before we jump kind of over to Europe in the European side, um, we've got Ben and we've got Rachel there. I don't know where you guys are based, but if you've got anything you want to add about the kind of North American view on this, now would be a good time to kind of say, raise your hand and, and jump in if you did want to say anything. Yeah, Ben and Rachel. <laughs> yeah, I have a, I have a comment. <laughs> um, I think the I, I definitely remember that was around the time I probably first started doing like performances uh, and it did tank park practice a little bit. Um, but to be fair, I was already getting comments that was like, are you doing that with Velcro or something? So I don't know if it was necessarily uh, worse because it was still interpreted by people to a certain extent that there was some like trick behind it most of the time. Uh, but I will say it was nice for the period of time finding these balls for like a dollar in the thrift stores uh, really cheap. And that's like cheap practice balls for multi-ball. Uh, do you probably, still have any? Uh, yeah, I do in my bag. I can go dig one out. <laughs> yeah, go, go, go. I would uh, see how they, uh, how they hold up. Yeah, let's, let's see. 
unmute myself so you don't <laughs> get too I, I do have to say, and, and it's a bit of a guilty thing, but I really wish I had the glow in the dark ones because of the convexness, um, the sunlight made that glow in the dark so powerful. It's been more powerful than any other glow ball I've ever seen. And um, that would have been a really good idea if I wasn't so mad at them over the whole time. I'm sure they're out there. I just, I picture in my head that kind of ra end of Raiders of the Lost Ark, just a warehouse spanning right the way back of just crate upon crate of Fushigi ball. If anyone finds any, send them my way. <laughs> oh, wow, we got the full set. Mute. I was unmuted that yeah, way. Yeah, you're good. Uh, no, no, you're good, you're good. Yeah, so one of them was given to some, to me from someone that I had like tried it and they're like, I can't do this. The other two were definitely thrift store finds. Um, sometime after the craze like kind of went down and people realized there was a lot of uh, time and effort involved to make it look like the magic gravity ball. But I don't they're kind of fun to hang on to now. Like, yeah, like little artifacts of yeah, <laughs> what came before. My own personal museum of the Fushigi ball. <laughs> you didn't um, smash them to bits or shoot them with a gun. Can we show that one at the time? Yeah, or, this is... A, I get it, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it at the end of the day. A ball's a ball. <laughs> like, <laughs> what I love about the Fushigi, like, as soon as you, they put something inside, there seemed to have been a real desire for people to blow them up in different ways. So, ooh, ooh. Um, whether it's shooting it or cr dropping it, that was, uh, we'll definitely get to that. You've got so many videos to show. I have so many videos here and I'm really struggling with this. Um. But yeah, like there's, um, what happens if you crush a Fushigi ball in a hydraulic press? What happens if you oh, shoot yeah. one with a high powered rifle? Here we go. <laughs> okay, there's somebody trying to get in, just a second. I have to just, okay, there we go. Open the gates. Okay, open the gates. <laughs> oh, it was too fast. We have to do this again. Please do. I mean, I can't watch this too many times. This is amazing. We found this yesterday uh, when we were talking about this, when we were going to set up for this talk. Go camera, go. <laughs> this guy um, is just shooting it with a gun and he's just like, yes, okay, what happened to it's a whole channel devoted to um, shooting things as you do. Yeah. And he just shoots it like a hundred times and then back <laughs> into the right. It's amazing. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, again, just that kind of catharsis of uh, seeing this thing. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, just kind of, in terms of my own experience, and Lisa, I guess you're kind of in on this as well, because um, we were in Quebec, we were in Montreal when it dropped, um, and I remember just being very confused. I remember showing you the video and being like, this is a thing that's happening, but I don't know why this thing's happening. Um, and then went back to across to Europe kind of as it was kicking in, so the the initial commercial came out and then going back to Europe and just seeing like it didn't affect us on that kind of everyday level. We weren't, we were performing, but people weren't coming up to us in French Canada and the Quebec side. People weren't seeing this. Um, as you said before, like you, they can't market things to kids over here in Quebec. Um, but what it meant was instead of feeling that we were just seeing the kind of, the gut punch to of like yeah the commodification of this thing that we loved of this kind of art form that we loved that suddenly like this is what you do with it this is how you see all of this work all of this preparation all of this kind of love that we put into it this is what comes out the other side and i think from a european point of view when we were stepped back from the actual like financial implication of this that's what hit us the hardest. So we'll jump across to some of the European guys now. Um, I mean, Robert, you're on the top there. So um, if you unmute yourself. Um, yeah, like how did, how did you find it when you kind of saw the, that this was a thing that was sticking around? Uh, so I first experienced, or experienced, I first saw this happening 
in the US, right? So I saw this happening where you guys were at sort of post on the door, sort of commercial. And I was like, it's just the most American thing I can like imagine. Like, you, you, no, but like, I know like Don and like Brian are like laughing because I see you guys, but it is true. Like this type of advertisement, which is initially false advertisement is not allowed uh, where I live. And I think a year and a half in, somebody tried to uh, try to get this into the Netherlands. Like there was one guy that tried to uh, to import it had on their website. And during that time, I had an RSS uh, search running that I could just find if something like that was coming to town. And I basically uh, contacted our. Uh, we have like this consumer. Uh, care agency i guess or anyway they take care of consumer rights i just called them up showed them this like you know this is false advertisement uh their website was gone in three weeks wow okay and the first thing i personally came into contact with fushiki was once busking uh five years later like five years after the commercial approximately and uh, that was when an American tourist said the word fushiki to me. I mean, I didn't respond too politely, but. So I want to say like uh, Mellers and I both did um, contact the American Bureau of Advertising as well, like the commercial bureau. And a lot of people did because it was a scam and, and but it just didn't hold water. Nobody did anything. That was really the problem. So it's just an ineffective board, um, which was interesting. I think that's the thing. Yeah, it's um, even though it's misleading, it is still. It's such. A, it was such a minor. It was such a, a brief flash of something that was actually selling, that I don't think that there would have been time for that even to kick in. Um, they picked this up. They ran it. They did like two product changes. Realized it wasn't effective for them and dropped it regardless of like whatever impact it left on the rest of us um so yeah yeah, yeah. um so brian o'connell i'll jump across to you just for now hello yes. hello um, hey how are you doing <laughs> <laughs> but this is interesting because we were obviously we were both in edinburgh we were both kind of doing a lot of practice, a lot of play kind of in Edinburgh at the same time as this was kicking off. So yeah, how were you uh, reacting to it as it went through? Um, I think it was because I never really did a lot of busking or anything like that or a lot of performing outside of like actual uh, events and things like that where you don't really tend to get people shouting stuff at you. <laughs> um, so I think like personally it didn't like affect me massively um but it was i think it was like you said it was that thing about just kind of reducing what we do to a gimmick uh which isn't actually a real gimmick at the same time it doesn't make it easier to do anything so i think there was i'm also surprised it was 10 years ago it seems like it was I'm not sure if it feels like it was longer ago or closer I'm not sure um but yeah it's I, I'm st I think I'm still not sure how I feel about the whole thing. It just kind of uh, angered me that people would, yeah, reduce it to just like a, a gimmick with no context. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting thing because levels of iration were high. Sorry, go on, go on. Oh, can I just show that little review that like, like this is seen from the outside and I liked that thing that we found with the Hardman guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of, um, one of the myriad Hardmans around the world. Yeah, so let me just share my screen here with you. And um, I just want to share this one quote that is, like, it really sums it up, this feeling that we all had, and it wasn't just us. Um, go, computer, go. Keep the picture. But you know, contact juggling is impressive. It's a skill that requires a ton of practice and a lot of hand-eye coordination. And I respect people that can do that, because I certainly can't. Even if now I associate contact jugglers with this piece of crap product. But if you... Like that, that 
little thing there. Even if I associate uh, contact jugglers with this piece of crap product, it's like, this is exactly the problem. Yeah. And he's like, I think he is actually the Black Panther. So we've got to take him at his word. <laughs> but no, that's, I mean, that's really interesting. And actually, that's kind of a thing that's cropping up a lot now. If you search for Fujigi online, there's a lot of like, what the hell was this kind of videos going on. Uh, Time magazine had it, like an online Time magazine article of the 13th worst infomercial of all time. And uh, yeah, it has this kind of impact like that. Um, yeah, and that association just drives, yeah, 25 worst, we mean best commercials. Like, I mean, that says it all. Like, it does have this position. People know about this. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And one thing, like, we'll, we'll definitely move on to, but, like, Brian in particular, as we were talking there about what was going on in Edinburgh, we, and you were saying about how angry it was making you, and I think that's going to be a general thing as we go around. There's a banana shigi in the room. Um, but that it made a lot of people incredibly angry. Like, and there was kind of name-calling. There were people calling out people who were involved in the infomercial and all this kind of stuff and I think in Edinburgh at least I know definitely other people were doing this and the fact that Robert was just doing some banana shiki and um so he did is it Craig am I right I think it's Craig um no maybe not um but the with the banana shiki review like um <laughs> that there was also there was this movement to kind of lighten the mood again Adrian thank you thank you um yeah there was this movement of like we can't just be annoyed at this thing that's not going to help us at all so in edinburgh we made the really stupid tutorial videos we made these kind of like how to learn things in a difficult way that was a reaction to that um mcp made the slow rolling fushiki ball out of honey and metal uh, like a little metal ball in a in honey and that kind of thing which again oh have you got that lined up yes <laughs> skip to the epic uh, music kind of halfway through uh, yeah there you go just while it's rolling there you are what this the is hell is <laughs> go, go, go. oh we've not got sound unfortunately um, yeah which again like 150,000 views kind of immediately <laughs> Yeah, that's where the love your all quote came from. And yeah, so we kind of had this response. It's like, we're just going to try and alleviate this and maybe try and, we can't do anything about it, but we can have some fun with it at the same time, this kind of release. Um, but yeah, moving around. So Ed, I know you're one to, um, to take these things seriously when it comes to it. How did you find... Yeah, like your first impressions of it, and then when you realized, oh no, this is going to have an impact. Oh, um, God, I've got to think that quite far now. Um, I know it ended up just a joke over here, it really did. Um, we only really heard about it from tourists. Um, at first, we were like, the fuck is going on? Like, they cannot be serious with this shit. Um, but yeah. They were, I guess. And then it died a quick death, but people kept saying it and we just made fun of it lots. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that it had any impact on what you were doing at all? Or were you completely just able to step away from it and say, this is this entirely alien thing? On, on me personally? I, I didn't oh, yeah. Didn't give a shit. I was just holding a ball, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we're all doing. That's all we're all doing. <laughs> But that's got like, I mean, that's great that you were kind of able to, to have that. I think that's kind of what we'll talk about next is people who it, who it did affect as well and um, who were. But then I, I think maybe you were also a little bit further along in that path away from the more traditional view of contact anyway. So that might have an impact at the same time. It, it, it's still a ball at the end of the day and people are going to see what they want to see. And if they've only seen that, then that is what they're going to associate it with. But to me, no, it just wasn't me. So, cool, cool, cool. Um, so, 
Uh, I don't know, Rachel there, did you want to uh, throw anything into this? You're next on our, our little rundown. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm brand new to contact juggling. And um, yeah, I've actually been practicing with a Fushigi. Fantastic. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm just curious what you guys had to say about it. It's not something I know much about. Well, this is actually really interesting. And kind of, I want to hear more from people who are new to this and who are coming in kind of after the big shakedown happened after all this stuff um so just out of interest like what was your first exposure to contact in general was it fushigi uh no i just started actually brian showed me contact juggling yeah <laughs> <laughs> got me at pack fire um and yeah this I mean, I'm brand new. I just started with smaller balls, smaller contact, multi-balls, trying to go get like three, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the size of this right now. Um, well, that's the thing. They are actually like, that's a good size. That's it. They ended up making an okay product. It took them a long time to get their kind of quality control in place, but if you find those for dirt cheap, they're not a bad prop now. They're not quite as magical as a proper acrylic, but really? they're not bad. So just is for the, the weight the of it, is the weight of it different than what you guys normally use? Just slightly less. It's only a little bit, uh, because it's hollow instead of it being filled, it's only just a slight amount, uh, like 50 to 100 grams or something. Yeah. Had you ever had you ever seen the um, the commercial when it aired? Was it completely just new to you? Yeah, I do remember it. <laughs> Someone actually gave this to me um, last week, so I've been playing with it a lot. But uh, yeah, I do remember the the commercials as a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you think that impacted your view of Contact at all, or is it just like a thing that was on TV? Yeah, I mean. I just, not really. It's something that I kind of forgot about until I started contact juggling. But, yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah. The kind of how, how deep does this uh, stuff go? Um, yeah. But yeah, so I'll jump on. So, um, so Adrian there, if you uh, want yeah. to add some stuff. Yeah. So yeah, because that was again, the, the banana shigi kind of, thing that suddenly appeared as a reaction as well. So um, it'll be interesting to talk about. But yeah, how was uh, your kind of initial reactions and reactions going on as well? Yeah, uh, I don't know how well my microphone's working because it's a new laptop, good. so cool. Um, in the UK, I had nothing. I got no, nobody mentioned Fushigi at all, nothing like that. But I went to a wedding in New Orleans that year and I just took a couple of stage balls with me and I just had l lots and lots of shouting out of Fushigi, 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 but I just gave the stage balls out, let people try, and they then went, okay, all right, it is a skill, it's not in the ball. And it didn't stop people from just wanting to sit and watch and so on. I get more, um, <laughs> I get more people asking me if I'm going to the soft play area when I've got a stage ball than I do anything else. <laughs> so, yeah, but I think in a way it helped, it felt like it helped get people really engaged as well. It felt like somehow, particularly on .org, there people just really bonded over, hang on a minute, what's going on i feel like that's a really interesting point and yeah for dot org in particular there was a moment where we kind of realized again that oh we actually care about this i mean obviously we knew that we did it a lot and we talked about it all the time and we shared stuff but it's that reminding ourselves no we actually really care about this this is something that we're we're putting this effort and this love into for a reason um so yeah i think that's a really good point as well it's that's why kind of tension was so high for so long people were so yeah so like i mean the north american thing of was on a busking level on a performance level it had that kind of rug pulled out from underneath them but just 
for ev like for most people just on a kind of actual presentation level it's like well yeah we care about this thing we want it to be represented with the same care that we have about it um so yeah drew are you um are you there yeah i'm interested yes. to know how yeah, there. um i know we were having uh, issues last time with catching you um yeah so how did you find all of this when it was going on uh, well, I guess if you sort of imagine the world without Fushigi, that was basically the UK at that time. I think it was really irrelevant to, to to me, or rather we sort of saw it and we saw it from, you know, Americans getting really annoyed and we didn't quite understand why. Um, I think at the time, sort of did. They sort of explained it enough after being on .org. Um, but... I think, yeah, I mean, I, I guess Rob kind of touched on it a bit. It, it's a very different culture that America has towards consumerism, towards capitalism, towards advertising. Um, and as Rob was saying, you, you just, I don't think you would get away with it in Europe. No, there's, it's a thing which I've noticed being, like having moved over here as well, is there's often a lack of, Irony in the UK and I guess in Europe as well. Like I'm speaking primarily for the UK because that's what I'm aware of. But we expect a certain layer of irony over our advertising. And in the UK, we're inherently suspicious if someone's being enthusiastic and taking something seriously. <laughs> good, good, good. Actually, Please. I'd like to jump in with a quick point as well. And I think Drew kind of touched on this, but. Um, I think one of the biggest issues in North America is that Americans are that gullible. We're so used to being advertised everything all the time and just from every angle. And so people just believed it. And I think that's a lot of the separation. One, it wasn't advertised quite the same in Europe as it was in North America. But two, Europeans I don't think are that susceptible. I don't think they're that gullible to it all. And that really shaped how people were reacting here. I don't remember seeing a advert for it over here at all. So I I don't think they even bothered trying to come over here with it. No, I I mean you can just see from the availability and things that they tried they had this idea that it was gonna be kind of whatever this new kind of kids craze, like the new yo yo or whatever. But they almost immediately realized that there's such a a skill ceiling to actually getting involved with this thing that they couldn't they just couldn't get away with that and it just dropped off again and so yes yeah, so that's why we suddenly had them for super sale at the front of the shop kind of thing um so yeah i don't think they would ever have been able to take this thing international i believe it's the same company that bought us the big mouth billy bass singing fish so which is worse well, which one has more international appeal? <laughs> um, so, Robert, yeah, in the, the chat there, just um, post a thing. Did we do any research about what happened to the company? There were, there was, like, two years ago, there were some quiet rumblings that maybe this was coming back. <laughs> just a constant supply of things near Robert there. Which is good, because the way this is recording means it's only me talking, so no one will believe me that Robert is currently <laughs> decorating himself with a large fish. Ah, <laughs> oh, there's nothing to be done. Um, but there's a really good article that Brad Weston wrote, which is totally worth checking. It's on his blog. To search for Brad Weston Fushigi, we'll probably put a link to it. Um, he actually did some serious research, and he contacted... Uh, John Caminaro, who's the guy behind uh, Zoom Media, who were the guys putting this out, and he contacted Michael Motion, he contacted James Ernest. Uh, really interesting stuff, really interesting to read the kind of the marketing spiel that's put out about what this thing was going to be and how it was going to bring people into contact. And like, contact jugglers were going to be the new mentors to a new generation of Fushigi people, which just didn't happen. Um, like, we're all pretty well, we've all met a lot of other contact people, I would say, a lot of people doing this, and 
has anyone met anyone who came in through Fushigi? I think maybe Brian uh, Manili. I think you said you may be someone who came in through Fushigi. I might be making that up. No, there was there was a couple of people who did actually come into the forums, come into .org, and I think Craig Watson, um, Octavo, was one of those. Um, but yeah, there's there's definitely been people around America that have picked up the balls and then, um, you know, had to seek out people to learn from, whether it's the internet or people directly. <laughs> um, what is this video? I don't think I've seen this video. Um, so for context, Freddie Wong is, he does a lot of like special effects, very silly videos on YouTube. He's really good. He's worth a watch. Um, so there was a podcast, um, my brother, my brother and me, which I actually didn't get around to listening to, but Dawn, you uh, put me onto this. They, this is two years ago, I think. Yeah, so two years ago, and, and they did a contest about like um, Fushigi artists, and, and they kind of met, I think, with, uh, with the, the company of Fushigi, and there was like a, like maybe a relaunch, and so they were like, oh, we'll call out to all contact jugglers to be Fushigi artists, and, and Freddie Wong, he was one of the guys who actually responded, there was two, there was one that was really beautifully shot entry, and then this one, um, and oh, this is a different video now. But um, who went and 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 entered this contest? But there was only two entries basically, and nobody had any interest in all of. I think all the contact jugglers were just like, uh, this is too close to Fushigi to actually be a part of this, and no, nobody <laughs> joined. I mean, heavily couched in irony as well. Like they're very much in that kind of trying to appeal to the the very cheesy corny nature of that advert i mean like what is this thing where did it come from because they were actually specifically asking for an artistic uh fushigi video and they were going to like patronize a, an artistic fushigi artist as like which i i guess anyone who was kind of in the scene would be able to say well artistic contact juggling videos like here's a list of 20 of them they already exist. They've existed for 15 years. They've existed for longer. Here's Michael Motion. Like, here's any of this stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I see why I didn't get traction. But it kind of, again, pulls into that thing of, like, for a lot of people, it is a bit of a punchline still. Um, I recommend the podcast. Ah, Ben Wright recommending some, uh, some My Brother, My Brother and Me uh, stuff. Yeah, like... I think, I don't think it's anything on them in particular, but I think it is, if that's your view of this stuff, if that's like your exposure to contact is Fushigi, that's what you're going to have in your head. Like that um, Holden Hardman video you played, it's like my association is with this thing. Um, but yeah, I'm going to keep rolling around because there's still some people we haven't heard from. Um, so Daniel, dream up right down in the corner there. Um, what was your experience? Because I guess you maybe came in a bit, later as well a bit after this whole bushy thing had been kicking around what was your kind of experience with that yeah thank you tom thanks for for everything you do and don and everyone too for this beautiful room love you all um yeah i'm in america i'm in california los angeles and um you know i learned about contact juggling from daniello performances you know that guy on instagram just like pff, the master so I saw him and it was just so, it was two years ago. I'm two years into contact. I have been doing it professionally for one year. So I went really hard. It's very deep medicine for me, as you guys understand. But then the food, I don't own a Fushigi. I only have acrylics and stuff, but uh, I've been at gigs and people are like, Fushigi, yeah. Or like, or, you know, and, and I'm like, and I feel in my heart, I'm like, am I offended? Is this, I don't, I don't know. Am I, am I offended? Um, <laughs> so I'm just kind of, kind of getting onto the tail of the conversation, but yeah, like, not a lot of people in America use them. Uh, most people are using acrylics here. Obviously not so many people doing contact, but it is seen as a toy. It is seen as something not serious. And I mean, it can be, I think. I think they can be beautiful. It's all about what you do to it, you know? Um, it's a trip. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you actually see the commercial when it aired? Like back in the day or the one that recently kind of repopped out? Um, back in the day, like they did a big no. for maybe two months and then 
Yeah. yeah see, I, I never even knew about contact juggling literally until two years ago. I saw Daniela performances doing some stuff and I was like, whoa, he had two, two acrylics doing full body stuff. I'm just like, I want that. And I was, in a really, <laughs> I was really depressed to be honest. I was like going through a lot of, so it was really good for like mental health. That was what really healed me in that time. It still does every day. And I'm so grateful for that medicine. But uh, yeah, I didn't know about Fushigi until later. And then I saw him like, those look cool. You know, it's got the metal inside. It's kind of a different type of illusion, you know, but I still prefer acrylics. I think they're just nothing wrong with them. Um, it's interesting. Everyone's kind of thing. Yeah, but in LA, everyone's rocking acrylics, it seems like. So. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, you speak to some really interesting stuff there about how it is a thing that for a lot of us it is a very personal thing. And it, it's, it's weird saying this, like, so in the UK, there's a real instinct to kind of brush this stuff off as well. Because it's like when we really care about something, we kind of take the piss out of it. And that's kind of what we do. Um, so if we're being serious about a topic, it probably means we're either really, really angry or we don't really care about it. But if we really care about something, that's when we're going to kind of have a sense of mockery, having this kind of sense of, yeah. But that was the thing with this. And again, like I said before, we suddenly realized that, yeah, this is, this is the thing that we deeply care about. I feel there's almost a little bit of this going on at the moment with there's kind of the commodification of flow as a concept and like uh, business seminars that are kind of teach your workers flow, get them into the flow state and all this kind of stuff. And this is like a new commodification of this stuff. This is a new way that people are like, that businesses and yeah, this kind of business seminar people are saying like, we can market this concept and we can take it like out of circus and put it into other realms as well. Yeah, commodification stuff's weird, but um, yeah. Ooh, interesting points. Um, yeah, from Ben right there. Sphere play, um, which is really interesting that there was a bit of this duality with sphere play as well. There was like a, a bit of a grating up between people who were like, this is contact, this is fair play. And it's fair play, like on their DVDs and things, they were making the point that this is different to contact, but it's kind of not. It's just approaching it from a different angle. Um, but yeah, so why is it that there wasn't that same kind of reaction? Because they were still kind of part of the fold, I feel. I, I, I don't think anyone really thought that they were completely at odds to what contact juggling was or vice versa i think the idea was you needed to have a bit of both um yeah it's done you're saying there like it's play yeah they but, really just went um on that play angle instead of it being taken super seriously like greg maldonado and the and the crew at the time who were putting out dvds were just really like serious technical blah 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 and this is where you start to get into that debate about flow and tech and blah, blah, blah. But sphere play was like trying to take the play angle, trying to take that flow angle before flow was a thing. And they did it with heart. And yeah, exactly. It was just like fun loving, like, yay, let's play with balls. And, and, and they were, um, but that, that no one ever thought that they were different than us. They were just like, oh, that's sphere play. They do a thing that's exactly the same and they call it play. So they were never different like outside of the community. They weren't somebody coming in and telling us who we are. I think that's yeah. the big thing that you nailed on there is that spear play did not make a mockery of the art form. They just approached it differently. Fushi specifically had this, what to some people was a physical and financial detriment to, their, to, their, to themselves, to their livelihood by calling it this magic gravity ball. Like it was that term. If they just called it Fushigi and said, this is an art form practice it a lot practice for 10 hours a day and in a month you might look okay but spear play was just they were in it for the fun they were in it for the love great bunch of people but i don't think they were yeah they just weren't making a mockery of it yeah i remember good point i met michael at the renaissance fair because he's the one that i learned spear play from in like 2006 and i was like this is so cool there's this crew of people doing this ball thing and they're just like jamming to it and I want to do that. <laughs> I went back like for two or three years straight 
I'd always like run straight to that tent because I was like, this is awesome. These are <laughs> spear players. But they were actively building a community as well. Like they were, they were an active part of .org, but they were an active part of the Renfair communities and they were doing their own like meetups and their own jams and things. So yeah, they were trying to support a longer tail to this instead of just, uh, yeah, like dropping a product, getting as many out of the door as possible and then closing up shop again. So I think, yeah, it definitely, there are, and that was the thing, because fair play is a registered term as well. It's a trademarked term. I don't know the exact legal definition of it. Um, in the same way that Fushigi Magic Gravity Ball was. But again, the intention was different there. And uh, hey, where is a Craig? I knew a Craig existed. It's good. Hello there. Um, yes, 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 yes. Um, I guess like another good thing to talk about, um, and this is if people want to jump in, get involved, make, like make yourself known and unmute yourself, but like how you then reacted to it. Because I know I definitely had a reaction to it. And maybe this was boiling over in my head anyway, and this was just like the kick that I needed. But for years afterwards, I didn't touch an acrylic. And I still, it takes me time to pick up an acrylic and use one now because I'm more out of the habit of it. Because this was people's view, because people now have this view of contact as Fushigi and this was a thing that existed, I didn't want any association with that. So I moved way the hell away from anything that was in that video, in that commercial. I moved away from butterfly stuff. I moved away from enigmas and that kind of thing. And it was stage balls all the way. And so that was my own kind of, and yeah, we reacted doing silly stuff and we put silly videos out there kind of intermediate reaction to it. But then on a deeper level, I definitely found myself like escaping from that classic view of contact. Um, I'm wondering if anyone else had a similar reaction or changed what they were doing as a result. Um, feel free to unmute yourself and dive in if you, uh, if you do want to. I, or I, I, th I think when, when I saw Sphere Play and when Colin as well saw Sphere Play, we just thought, no, let's just get good. Yeah. <laughs> let, let, let's just practice. Let, 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 let's, let's make something of this. Let's, let's not do that. We, we, we're having fun, but there, there, there was discipline. So what's interesting there is that, and again, this probably speaks to when these things hit, um, that you guys reacted to uh, sphere play in that way. Um, because, I mean, you can see, you watch, like, your old videos when you were filming stuff together. Like, that's definitely showing, like, there's a, you're really pushing that discipline, that clean line kind of stuff. Um, but then when Fushigi rolls around, you didn't feel as impacted by it. And I'm just wondering why maybe that was. Don't know. <laughs> Is it just being more comfortable with your own material at the time? I mean, when I started out, that's when sphere play was a thing. Um, and it was, yeah, it was all about the fun. It was all about connection, getting together and having a laugh with your mates. But me and Colin were like, we're doing this anyway, but we're pushing it still. And, and it was it was that push, that drive that, for me and Colin made it completely different. Yeah, um, I think that really speaks to uh, those, the differences we saw at the time, for sure. I mean, and, and, and that's not to say that those guys didn't have push, they didn't have drive, they, they, they had their own, own goals and stuff, but um, that, that's just how we saw it at the time. And this is back in the days when videos, you had to download them before you could watch them. Like, you know, you, you were watching on dial up and shit. <laughs> Oh, good, yeah, when there were like 20 videos out there and that's what, that's what sharing was and we weren't seeing the mad stuff that was going on at conventions and things that, yeah. like, and invisible it gifts. It, it was all yeah. done on GIFs as well. <laughs> but, um, yeah, 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 <laughs> which is so true. Like, those super slow, super janky GIFs were how a lot of us learned. And, yeah. Um, 
but yeah, so kind of expanding that. So you were saying like you actually kind of, yeah, I think that's it. I think being comfortable with your own material, like you knew that this was the drive pushing forward and that this was going to be kind of a flash in the pan thing. It wasn't going to change. You, were you really using acrylic as much then, like 2010? That's yeah. kind of like Clonakilty kind of festivals and things. I feel um, like we... Sphere Play was way, way older than that, even. Um, oh, this is Fushigi in particular. Oh, Fushigi. Kind of, um, yeah, acrylic? Yeah. Nah. No. Um, acrylic's for show, stage for a pro. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah, I wonder if that was already, like, you were maybe just ahead of <laughs> that curve of pushing away from that stuff. Um, because, yeah, like, did... So from people who are kind of also here as well, did you feel that your personal style moved away as a result of Fushigi in particular? Um, like, Dawn, did you feel any of that? Sorry, I was, I was responding to the question. What was the uh, question? Oh, um... Whether, so Fushigi comes along and it's this thing that's being marketed. Did your own personal style or your own personal kind of stuff that you're presenting, did it change as, as a result? Well, I did start painting myself entirely gold. <laughs> there was that whole thing where I completely changed into a human statue and uh, therefore changed, you know, everything. Um, that increased my finances tenfold. Uh, the results of Fushigi, despite me being really angry and my reaction, which we haven't talked about, but everybody saw very clearly at the time with all of the videos I made, um, it, it actually came back full. So the funny thing about the gold thing was I painted myself gold and then there was these Got Talent things and I auditioned for it. And I instead went with the busking project instead of going on the Got Talent. But that company hired me to be on a different TV show, which I got on. And then in Canada, I became my own contact juggling reference because I had been on TV as this gold person. And it was kind of a brilliant resolution in my storyline with that whole thing. Um, in, in, in the end, my reaction of painting myself gold got me on TV and then became the thing that was my reference. So that was kind of a win and financially did much better um, with this whole character that, yeah, Goldie was born, exactly. It was, it was um, happenstance, but it was, it was kind of incredible and, and, and uh, the way it affected my life. That's, yeah, so I mean, it, it's interesting that it kind of did create a lot of productive stuff and within a community, the way that we re reacted to it, which was often, especially initially, pretty negative. But when we came around to it, it created a lot more of a sense of community because, yeah, again, a lot of people realized that other people cared as much as they did about it. Um, I'm wondering, anyone else here, did it affect their kind of actual contact itself, their actual juggling itself? Feel free to uh, jump in, unmute and jump in. Well, I, I alluded to this earlier, but. Um, I still had contact when I moved to Norway because um, that was fine there. All was well and good. But when I came back to America, that's actually what got me into club passing. It was around the time that uh, O'Connell actually came for visit. He was the one that taught me, now that I think about it. Um, but it became this art form that was like, oh, this is juggling. This is that, that thing that people have been doing for hundreds and hundreds of years. And there was no like trickery involved in it right it was people hucking clubs and that was that so yeah it literally made me switch out of the form for a couple of years really interesting yeah i wonder kind of on a larger scale if it also affected other people in the same way because i mean i i just i know personally i was kind of loath to touch acrylics for a, a long time as a result it's just i, I didn't want that association did anyone um, else give up or, or, or take a step back or change in that time? I, I set an acrylic down and probably... I did open up into more um, different art forms like koi and things like that at the time. Um, I, I remember going on, uh, I think you went on TV as well, Dawn, yeah, I remember? Um, to like rally against Fushigi and uh, in the end I just ended up kind of accepting it. Um, and ultimately I think, like you were saying, it... it uh, 
it, it kind of led to more interest in what I was doing because kids were coming up and saying, is that one of those balls? And, you know, then it was like, well, yeah, but here's, here's the, here's the, um, what, what goes on behind it. And, uh, I did see more interest in that eventually. Interesting. Yeah, I think um, that was a, a video we, we should find as well. There is still a video of you going on TV about that, right? Somewhere. <laughs> I think that's Somewhere. in the deep dives on uh, typing yeah. Fushigi Ball into YouTube and just despairing at the world. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't actually remember the guy's name who was behind that, but he was, he was like on the other end of the line arguing uh, his point and uh, it wasn't pleasant. <laughs> Um, that was so, from Reno. It was it was the, the 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 yeah the original guy and and Ben writes it in the comments there. I took a four year break. Holy cow! Four yeah, years. fill us in. Ben Wright, fill us in on that. So I, I mean, it's probably a mixture of things because it was right around the time that all that dropped and I would started performing, and then I just. I think it was also part of hitting that one uh, plateau that I'm sure we've all hit with it, where you you just like, I don't know what else I can do with this. <laughs> like, I yeah. don't know how else I can expand on this. Um, and then I just felt like I, my artwork was pretty cheapened. Um, you know, people didn't necessarily appreciate it in the same way before that they might have. And it, rather than getting the dumb comments that was like, oh, is there magnets or is there Velcro? Uh, instead it was like, oh yeah, you do that. I know how you do that. It's a Fushigi ball or something. Um, so yeah, I just kind of, I set it down because it, it wasn't giving that same value, I think, to me as a, as an artist or, or anything for a while. So it, it took a minute to kind of find that again and feel good picking them back up. I think it's a, like, yeah, that's an interesting thing that you throw out there because when people are coming up to you, like when kids are coming up and going like, oh, it's on a string, I can see it's on a string. I immediately think of Scottish kids abusing you because that's what I'm used to. <laughs> But like that's an interaction that you've got going on there, and then you play with having it on the string, having the string like going through the body, or oh, it's yeah, magnets, I can pull it around. You yeah, you it. play with it. Yeah, like that's it. It's, it's an interaction that you're having. What from the that kind of fushigi side, it closed off the interaction. They it wasn't an inquiry that they were coming up and that they were being like, wow, what is this thing? I want to try and understand it. Is there a little mouse inside that's running around, like being the weird things that people say to you? Um, or is it like full of a liquid? Like it's almost like the effect of if a magician were to have their trick revealed, except our trick wasn't revealed. Like, <laughs> um, but it was. It, that's it. There's no trick, but people yeah, were but told it, there was. Like, like that's what they like were seeing. Like they're like, oh yeah, I know how you do that, <laughs> but you don't. <laughs> yeah, it's that's... taking the mystery out of it. Yeah, exactly. Like people, people made that association and it just cut off that kind of line of inquiry in their head or that willingness to engage because that's what we need from this. We need that spark of engagement. That's what got me into it. I saw it live the first time and that's what got me into it was seeing someone performing, seeing you and Colson performing and be like, bam, I'm, I want to get involved with this. Um, just out of interest, uh, Ben, again, um, what was it that brought you back in? Was it just remembering, oh, I like doing this thing? I, yeah, I turned it, I, I just like turned on some music one day. I'd recently moved to Oregon and I'd been interacting with uh, Bry and Riel a bit more. So we lived in the same town. This was in the past couple of years. And I was like, okay, I've actually a, met other contact jugglers for the first time since I met Michael back in like 2007. Uh, and, then I just kind of, I don't know, I like found it. Like there was a little bit of that spark again that I kind of initially found. I had some renewed creative energy, uh, some new ideas that I wanted to play with. And, and that goes a long way after an extended break. Wow. I really wonder how many people we actually lost. Like people who are exactly like you. Um, Adrian in the comments is talking about how he switched to ISO batons. Um, Bri is talking about how he did clubs. Like how everybody really stepped away from it. Like the whole community was like, uh, what do we do with this? And found ways to cope. But it seems like a lot of people put their balls down. And I wonder how many people we actually lost in that fray. That's, it's really unfortunate. And that other side as well. Oh, sorry, go on, go on. As I oh, dive I over. Go cool. um, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the other side is how many people were scared off by the kind of the existing scene's reaction at the same time. Like people who, and it kind of, it breaks my heart a little bit to think about this, but who came in and were like, hey, Fushigi, I've seen this cool thing, I want to learn it. And then just being hammered with, it's not Fushigi, it's context. How dare you use that word? We don't use the F word here. Like that is the worst thing that you can say. How many people did we push away as a result of that? And like trying to keep ourselves balanced and like being like, well, no, there's a whole backstory to this. But it still happens now. You see someone post on Facebook like, oh, I've got a Fushigi ball. What should I do next? And then just being hit by this barrage of like built up frustration about it. I, I have to confess that's like nearly my everyday, and uh, I'm very I'm very lucky to have friends like Rachel actually that, um, you know like like to poke and prod me with that and refer to it nothing as other than Fushigi, which I think is important because I I find myself still harboring this resentment and still, um, just getting very irked by it, and I realize like I should let it go. This is this was like a decade ago, wasn't it? Or the better part of a decade ago. Two thousand ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I mean, in fact, it's, I think this is possibly the 10 year anniversary because it was um, early spring 2010. I couldn't find the exact date of that first video, but um, yeah, we're basically at the, the decade anniversary now. Wow. But it was a huge loss. It wasn't like, so there was some unfortunate timing with like the rise of Facebook and the, and the spam on the forums and not just our forum, but all of the forums started becoming out of control with this BBS spam. And then for and then Facebook started taking over. So we had this like triple hit of Fushigi forum spam and Facebook rising sort of stuff. So our community kind of split. And then um, and and that's the thing is the, this wonderful feeling. There was like a five year period of dot org that was just like the softest, warmest, cuddly community uh, space of all time in which we were actually all just having fun and we had a really good like worldwide thing going on. And then all of a sudden the Fushigi forum spam uh, Facebook combo like broke it apart and nobody wants to use forums anymore. And, and I mean, it's, I've been trying for a long, long time to try and get everybody together. This has been the most successful so far, but we lost our community and that was a big deal. And like, like we are the ones who motivate each other. We're the ones who keep each other together and keep each other being like, oh yeah, that's kind of silly. Let me try this. And we're all a bunch of goofballs and that's kind of what keeps us together. Um, and, and without having that sort of united place to meet, I think um, really was a big loss. So, so it makes sense that you would still grieve that, in my opinion. Yeah, I think that's right, Dawn. I think I can remember um, when you came over to the UK at, to the um, convention in Bristol and, you know, there was a whole load of people there. I'd never met any of them face to face. I knew most people by their usernames, not by their real names. But when I saw all of them, Bri, who was, who was here earlier on, um, Nick, you know, when I, when I saw them all in real life, it was seeing friends. It wasn't just seeing words on a screen. And it really helped me get so far as well in contact juggling, in having fun. But also at the time I went through some pretty bad times with depression and so on. And Dot .org and the people around at that time helped me through that. It's such a thing that we're missing now as well. Like, yeah, we all miss that. We all miss that feeling of this, like, yeah, this community that was formed and from all over the place as well. It was kind of definitely like this good mix of interesting people, but that we all shared this love and this kind of, sh yeah, the shared interest in uh, in contact and. That's what was going. It was the same. Yeah, you go to any convention and you would recognize, like, oh, there's a contact juggler. Oh, I kind of know you already. We have this sort of shared bond already going on. Uh, Brian, you were, were you just I was just. There? I was wondering if it was just my time for my weekly suggestion that we get a forum going again, because that would be swell. It would be, but I'm. I'm just. I think people. Our habits have changed. And it's such a shame. And 
this is the weird thing with contact right now because contact isn't stagnating. Contact is still moving forward, but the discussion isn't because there isn't really a centralized place of discussion. It's so spread out amongst things. So people are doing amazing, incredible stuff just like they were before, but we're just not sharing it. We're not like sharing the excitement of this new amazing stuff. We have I this, think, go on. Oh, sorry. I think there is a chance. And I, I was talking with, with Ben, who by the way, I don't know if people are aware of this, but Ben, for the .orgers in the room was Esquire on .org. So just like throwing that out there. <laughs> um, chatting with Ben some months ago, we were talking about the possibility of putting it like a forum in, in app form, like in an app based forum, specifically because that seems how people are reacting. And I think we would have to meld into the realm of, you know, ex accessibility to people. But I think yes. every contact juggler I talk to from the .org days now is like, oh yeah, it'd be great if we had a forum for people to, to share with and to be able to archive these things and um, just have that wonderful bit of the internet just in a nice little package again. Does anybody know how to make an app? Anyone? Ben, ben does. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't you guys think that um, it might just be a lot of like nostalgia that we have because we have such good memories of this forum, but every time we try something else, we find it difficult to engage because even though for most of us, like contact, we've been doing this for so long and it's part of our souls, there are like a million other things that we occupy our life with. Like I might be like throwing random props around here and like, and I'm covered with balls, but I'm also with like covered with a pile of artwork and science projects that I need to do every day. So is everybody else. So that would just makes it hard. Even like if you had a new forum, like how many times would I post? Maybe like I used to once a month. But I don't know if that's, is that not indicative of just how we react to the internet differently now? Like social media has made it more immediate that we can do continuous updates about whatever is of interest to us. And we can find immediately kind of smaller disparate areas where maybe we just consume what's coming in without feeding back anything more. Like we got likes and we got things like that and sharing, which is our way of communicating that I am appreciating what you're doing. I'm not necessarily going to give you a comment because I can just give you a thumbs up or I can give you a share. That takes the place of leaving a comment and asking a question and kind of that back and forth that was the only way of kind of engaging with this stuff because i think even before we still had that same there was still the same amount of stuff going on the same amount of things pulling us in different directions it's just that we had this space that was equally community-based as it was skill-based which again it's a it's a juggling club if you go to an in real life juggling club half the time is juggling sharing skills back and forth half of it is drinking tea or smoking a joint outside, or whatever it might be. Big like, up to the Montreal Juggling Club that was the <laughs> laziest club of all time. <laughs> it was, we should have just bought hammocks because we were all so exhausted. <laughs> like, yeah, oh. But um, yeah, but that's what, I mean, that's what this kind of stuff is quite nice for because it is that hanging out kind of side. But I feel that, I feel we do miss that in a way that that community aspect I, I think it's tough with a format like this though because it's going to be harder to get someone that doesn't uh, recognize a lot of these faces to jump in here for me it's like oh yeah i've seen all these faces for more than a decade yeah i want to pop in and see them talk about stuff uh, if nothing else but somewhere like a, a forum it's just an accessible format for someone that doesn't know anything there you can search knowledge bases you can just all these ancient topics. I don't know, Brad, do you still have it downloaded, the entire website? Um, I think so. I'll have to check. It's on one of two hard drives. Over that there. would be a very interesting resource because, yeah, they are, they're so sporadic now if you try and go back over that stuff. Like, some stuff's still online, some stuff isn't. But, um, yeah, Ben, that's such a good point. Like, if I was a beginner now, 
and like Rachel, maybe you can speak to this a little bit as well. But if I wanted to like put a video out there, like to get some credit or something like that, to get some like, oh look, this is a thing that I did. Uploading it to Facebook feels a lot like just kind of showing it off to the world. And I don't know if maybe that's maybe people are more comfortable with that now, but I feel like we don't see as much of that stuff. We don't see new people getting involved on the same level as they did as when there was a forum around. It feels way less comfortable, I would say, in fact, that um, if, it, if I was a beginner now, I probably wouldn't put stuff out because you kind of need to get over this hurdle of being like, oh, I'm going to show, it, it better be good. And, and like, you're not really good at contact juggling for a long time. It takes a really hard, it's a, it's a hard learning curve. Um, and, and so I find that that lack of feedback, like once we started getting um, Mr. Clark online, he really increased his skill a lot, you know, and there's something about a feedback loop of, of, of looking at yourself and seeing your form and then being able to post it again. I think that actually makes your form better as well, but it's difficult when it's so public. There's, and like, I've seen this, there's been juggling Facebook groups where this has been a thing. I've even seen it a tiny bit kind of sneaking through into contact as well, where because people's way of reacting on, on Facebook and on forums and things is changing, um, there is more of an aggressive kind of, maybe not aggressive, but oppositional approach, where if you post something and someone doesn't like what you've done, they're not going to give you constructive criticism. They're just going to go, no, nah, that's boring. No, I don't like that. Like, yeah. that, oh, go on. Uh, so I think it's interesting. I do notice. But one thing I have noticed is that doesn't seem to happen on the, on, well, happens on different forums, but there's one of the um, yo-yo groups on, on Facebook, the British Yo-Yo Association group. There, people, beginners, post things up and you get that positive feedback. And I think the thing I really missed, I, I don't think I'd post things up now. It was good. It was nice posting things up as unlisted YouTube videos and sharing them and getting the feedback that way. And the thing that I really appreciated and that helped me a lot while I was learning was all the follow the leader games. Yeah, that's such a good point. Like um, things like that, that community involvement of saying, it's absolutely fine that this isn't a polished video that you're putting out there. You're allowed to make mistakes, but you're contributing to the, the community as a whole. Um, which is a thing that we need a constant community to get involved with to be able to do that stuff. Um, so it was, uh, Dan, did you have, were you jumping Dave, in with a point Dave there? has his hand up, which is an interesting thing that <laughs> is here yet. Yolo, uh, I love this conversation, by the way. Thank you, everyone. I, I think that there's different levels to it, you know, because not, not everyone is trying to be a professional. I myself feel very comfortable being, like, humble and, like, raw and sharing, like, this is my progress and I suck at this, but you know what? I'm learning this move and this is also what it looks like. I, I've actually personally on purpose made a couple of videos showing me dropping the ball a few times, like just to show people like, it's not like you just come out all wizard, you know, it, it is very, you know, a raw progress thing. And it depends on if you want critique or not. Some people I feel like just like to share their journey, you know? So it's, it's kind of interesting to see different people's levels. Myself, I want to be professional. I am professional. I, I had gigs when they were happening, and I missed that. But it's just really cool to see different people's comfortability. And I think you're right, providing a safe place where we don't feel judged, where we feel supported. Because, you know, we're human beings. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a thing that takes a long time, as we all know. So I'm just kind of piggybacking. I'm not going too deep right now. But I do love this conversation, and I think it's very valuable that we provide a safe space for people that's where the good stuff is you know it's all right to yeah to like it was a big thing and it was a thing that i feel we had to kind of course correct ourselves a little bit because we did get that kind of harder edge as a result of fushigi as a result of this kind of outside influence and that we had to kind of remind ourselves not to jump on people like new people when they came in but i think it's definitely the case i don't see as many new people putting stuff out there um, and how can we, how do we tell someone? Because this is like, and Dawn, like, I mean, this is the thing that we've talked about so much. It's like, we want to make this platform for people, but it still very much feels like it's weird 
talk, doing a lot of the, the talking, we want new people to feel like their voice is welcome and we want to see what they're doing and what they're like, what's exciting them. But how do you encourage that? I mean, we've been, we've been talking about it for a while. The, the, this has worked so far. I do think the app thing is an idea. And um, I think that Teresa has a really good idea with the follow the leader Zoom. Mm. <laughs> she put it in the comments there and it's like, oh yeah. I mean, how do we get that rolling? We'll have to talk about that. Uh, Robert, you were... Yeah, I was, I was wondering, do you want to create like a platform like the ministry was like as a source of inspiration but also with added uh, feedback like i mean because if, if you want we can make like a bunch of tutorial videos we all have the skill a bit more maybe more time than we used to i mean yes that is what we want um there are so many we're talking signal to noise of if you look for contact juggling tutorial now if you're a new if you're completely new to the world of contact and you go on youtube and type in contact juggling tutorial there are so many really bad tutorials of how to learn a butterfly and an enigma like really really bad ones and there's a couple of pretty good ones mixed in with all that but that's why we want to like, yeah, we definitely want people who have got this knowledge and have put the thought in, have done the, the work behind it to be producing stuff. And we want to kind of bring that together and have that out there so that if someone goes, how do I learn contact? You go, you look here, you click on this and this is, this is what you learn. Like that would be ideal. That would be so good. Yeah, I, I made this list. I think we talked about it like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you guys have probably seen the link. It's available to all. Uh, they're kind of like a list of curated contact juggling tutorial videos. Uh, so I just made it like in case somebody like asked just the question, right? You know, I'm looking for where to learn this. And it's not just English based because I really wanted to include as many languages as I could understand or find. So that's um, definitely something that we talked about. I did try Discord for a while there, Ed, and um, Slack I never tried, but we, we've, we've definitely like done a few of these and, and not had the following. And one of the problems is the noobs. We need newbies and we need people, like if this generation, our generation, and then everybody else is like this lone contact juggler all by themselves in each village, right? That's one of the problems of contact juggling. And, uh, one of the main questions I get almost hands down and that like we don't want to answer as a community is What is the progression line? Like what do I learn first? And where does that lead me? And 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 really what we need is like a flow chart for beginners to be like first you learn this then you learn this then you learn this for like You know each level just sort of a beginner sequence and I think if we created videos or flow charts or anything that led someone to believe like this is a good sequence to learn um, then and you could have a basic sort of routine or sequence that would be the most like valuable to the noobs the to the people that we're trying to attract i think we've come oh go on go on sorry before I, I feel like we need i feel like we need the equivalent of a vulcan tech gospel for contact uh, i feel yes. like that's always been yes missing. break down the theory like because we've come such a long way as well. And this is another thing like, again, like coming out of Fushigi, a big push that we had was like, okay, so how do we onboard people better? And we've, teaching now is so different to how it was. I think we've all, anyone who's teaching here has put in so much work into not just teaching that first lesson as it was taught in the book. We've all come so far in saying like, well, this was advanced. 15 years ago, but now this is like a basic thing that we understand better. We just, our general kind of, as a collective knowledge has gone so far that when we talk about this stuff, we can be so much more precise and we can be much more holistic in our approach now because, yeah, because we understand better how to click all this stuff together, that we don't need to have the same strict divisions. Why is our first lesson, like, why is the first lesson on YouTube now? 
that people, so many people are making, why is it still butterfly? When we know that there's loads of stuff you can do along the way up to that. It's, but that's just how we're fixed in this, in this way of thinking. Like I said, the progression of skills hasn't necessarily gone away. We, there's still people doing amazing stuff out there, but the discussion kind of hasn't moved on because we don't have a central discussion place. Right, are you doing a new version of this then? <laughs> one ball contact? <laughs> Did I just hear one ball contact is being released, Drew? <laughs> Definitely put Drew on the spot there. <laughs> that, that um, Reddit snapshot is kind of incredible. I I have been going there for a long time, but I guess it's the the pandemic it's been full. But I haven't. It was empty before that, so that's interesting. Or maybe I'm in a different Reddit. I don't check Reddit all the time, but it is one of the possibilities for forums that actually still runs. Yeah, I was surprised when I went there, and the top one was total noob. Don't know where to start. <laughs> Like that's the type of people we want to grab. Yeah, because a lot yeah, of people yeah. use Reddit now for especially niche activities and stuff. So I, I don't know, it was just a thought I've had. I try to lurk there. I don't know, just catch up with things. Yeah, I mean, and that's the so, kind of thing. That, Tom, oh, sorry, go on. Um, yeah. Well, no, only you asked me a question, and I thought I'd come back to it. Please you asked do, about one ball. Yeah, 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 yeah. You asked about one ball contact. Um. It's the book I wrote first. I dropped it in 2007 and it's written and all the pictures were taken and nothing's happened. I haven't even opened it since 2007. So there you go. It does exist, but also it shouldn't be a book, um, but it's entirely there as the structure. So if you and Dawn want to remake it as videos, you can have it. What? Yes. <laughs> uh, do that. Um, right. Because I know that Dawn, you just actually got a decent camera. Yeah, I mean, like I'm doing that work myself, Drew. Whether like your base work is likely better than mine, but I did a scratch of of, of a formula that I'm looking through to make as a thing. My ideal would be to. Uh, me and Tom were talking about it at one point. I was like, we need to write a grant for the Canada Arts Council, who does give a lot of money to tech-based people, and. Um, if we did that, then we could, you know, send some money towards like filming all of the best contact jugglers, like in an isolation tutorial version that like is a dream of mine, but you know, I need about 50 grand for that. So we'll figure it out. But Drew, I would love to read that book. Uh, hang on, hang on one second. Where's screen share? I want that book too. Oh, you got screen share there. Um, your videos helped me so much uh, when I first started on even choosing what kind of ball. I watched your videos, Don. Oh what? That's the that's the multi ball. Let's take a look. No. Oh, hang on. Uh, oh yeah, right. That's the wrong that's book. Multi okay, sorry, Ooh, the wrong I book. Okay, that's going fine. <laughs> okay, hang on. Uh, one ball front fluff. It's probably called that then. Hopefully, that's the right one. Uh, I don't have anything. Might not have the pictures. Let's find out if it's got anything here. Oh. Okay. Oh, 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 this yeah, it's like on the wrong page. Okay. That's so exciting. Hang on, Bible. hang on. I'm just going to try and get this to... Um... Oh, my goodness. One second. Right, let's see what we got. Whether we got anything. Have we got a table of contents? No, we don't. Okay, it does exist. Do you, you want to talk about yourself? I'll see if I can find it. Oh, please do. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think most people in here probably have uh, the multi-ball contact book already. But, um, yeah. I mean, I, I mentioned it. It's such a good resource. It's such oh, a good resource. Um, before we go into this, which is a really great discussion, I do yeah. want to wrap up the Fushigi thing. Is there anything left with the Fushigi conversation that we should, or are we done? Is it like that was over? We processed it. Everybody's healed. We're happy. <laughs> oh. Um, can I, can I chip something in? Actually, I, there was something I thought earlier. <clears throat> it reminds me a little bit of magic. And like, if you look at uh, most of magic that's sold, there's all of these crap books sold to kids. There's all these crap Christmas magic kits sold to kids that are pretty damn awful. But also a lot of kids get into them and love them. And I am sure it annoys the hell out of magicians the whole time. Um, and I think there may be parallels and kind of analogies there. And 
I think one of the things that was interesting is Dawn, you coming out of it and saying, you know, once the dust settled and a few years on, you were saying, hey, actually, you made a lot of money out of it. I know a lot of people came into the community then from it. I'm sure some of them stuck around playing with it. So I think in the long story, um, it was probably, you know, there's, there's bad and there's some good. Yeah, that cheap magic stuff does annoy, by the way. Yes. It annoys me as a parent as well. Um, but uh, I, I think the other thing is something like this will happen again. You know, but within the contact world specifically, or do you think that realistically, if you were managing a product now, do you not think you would see the crash and burn that Fushigi had? Uh, I think within art forms that you love, it will come again. I mean, thankfully for me, like 10 years have now passed and my heart has become frozen and dry. So I don't think I'll ever love anything again. So, I mean, I'm in the clear. <laughs> it's the next that. generation. <laughs> well, if I can say something, did Fushigi really crash and burn? Because the company behind it still made money. At least enough to, you know, like they sold that product at a profit. Like, it's not like the people that were in that mm. commercial got paid yes. tons of money. So, I mean, sure, it, for us as an art form, it was a terrible disaster. But financially, it might have not been like the next big hit. But it still made like, you know, revenue. Oh, they took their money and ran. Yeah, they just took yeah. all the money they could, banked it, and then closed up shop, in my opinion, yeah. The only thing that, um, which I, I kind of mentioned a couple of times that would make me question just whether it went exactly the way they wanted was that they did that big product revision to add the metal ball. So they had whatever the, the factory producing all the acrylics, whatever, that was a nice quick and easy, make a few bucks off this existing product. But then when they realized that that was a huge safety risk, they did this product revision which went through like a good few trials to actually get it centered and not bashed like these metal balls being kind of perfect in the middle. And then they introduced the glow one as well, which lasted for like a tiny bit of time. And like you were saying, Don, you can't, you actually would have wanted one of those, but they weren't available anywhere. So that's the only thing that I questioned that it wasn't just like a, a one and done like cash grab because they had to go back and revise it. They had to refilm. They had to kind of change that marketing around it. And that's the only thing that I would question about it. That might have not been a safety thing. That might have been an anti-lawsuit thing. Oh, God, yeah. No, no. Because I'm the lawsuit is more expensive than, you know, the revision. And the re this was a company that is, that don't have any production capacity themselves. They outsource this to factories in China. Like, they just have somebody that draws up schematics, tells them to them, like, you know, they go to different factories. Can you make it for this price? Some other factory says, oh, well, we can make it for cheaper. They need to do that engineering of aligning mm. that perfectly. Like, I doubt yeah. that there was any proper quality control in place other than, like, at the factory itself. Yeah, I'm thinking just in terms of, like, the, with these things, I think they need that initial push, get everything done because they don't want that warehouse space. They don't want the extra shipping kind of on their hands. Obviously, I don't know this stuff. I don't know kind of how their setup is. Um, that's the only thing that makes me feel maybe it wasn't quite the runner. And it didn't have legs. It definitely, again, you can see from that trend, um, it had these two big spikes when they did their two commercial runs. And then they had this kind of half spike when Christmas rolled around. And then just nothing it just completely dropped off after that. So it was a one year, well, six month kind of like turnaround. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, I, it would be interesting to know exactly what their takeaway from it was and how viable it was and whether those rumors of it coming back, yeah, what that means. Do they so, still have them? So for the recording, I'm going to turn this off soon, but is there any closing remarks on the Fushigi thing before we just move on to random jamming, which I'll probably have to leave for? 
Yeah, I was wondering what happened to the people that were involved and not just the company, other people who were Yes, we have not talked about the amazing Kenny. And the other jugglers, he wasn't the only one. No, um, which again, there was such a backlash. Yeah, Corey, Corey, yeah. On against uh, Fushigi after he saw what happened to it. He went rebel. He turned rogue and did a, a truth about Fushigi video. Yeah, there was um, no way. Kenny also pretty soon after that went to Japan for a while and hid over there, performing in a theme park over in Japan for a little while. I think, yeah, there was because there was such a backlash as well. And like the actual people who were in the advert, it was they were just told that they were turning up to an event that was going to be filmed. They didn't know how it was going to be edited. They didn't know the exact like impact it was going to have. I kind of feel really sorry for them because especially because the community did turn on them for a fair while of like, no, you've contributed to this terrible thing, but. Like how does an entire community kind of apologize to like, I don't know, to those people. And it's, I, yeah, I like, like we might have, we might have made some some peace there, and like off the top of my head, I only remember uh, Seth Feaster, Mako, and CJO Corey Oliver um, as being active members. And I think, if I remember correctly, they both came out and were like, "Yeah, we didn't know." But I feel like I, I hope the community forgave them relatively quick because it became apparent that it was just this big marketing ploy, and that they just kind of got used as pawns against their better judgment. If I remember rightly, the backlash against Kenny came more, less from just being involved and more from being constantly um, defensive of it, even when he was challenged, right? Yeah, Kenny, Kenny came back and um, was just sort of, yeah, I don't know. I felt like he was trying to take on the community, wasn't he? And he was like, no, I, I'm right because of this. And he never once, as again, this is a decade ago. My memory is faulty, but. I feel like he never once came back and said, yeah, guys, sorry, I kind of threw you all under the bus to make money. And he was in a position where it was a good gig to have. I mean, his face was on all of the boxes. He had his own, he had a website that was like a subscription website. Before that was really a thing. Like now with Patreon and things, that's kind of the way a lot of people have spun it. It's just the the surrounding environment. Um, I feel like my issue with that Amazing. stuff Is it? was um, so he had like a, like a subscription website, but not his own teaching necessarily. It was teaching of stuff that was already kind of out in the public domain, had been taken from other places. We were already on such shaky ground in contact of taking material from different places, but we try and source it or we try and kind of put it out there and share it amongst ourselves without that financial gain necessarily on that side. Um, so I think that kind of rubbed people up the wrong way as well of like, well, you're selling this, but what are you selling here? There's, um, again, that Brad Weston yes. article, give it a read. There's quite, there's, so there's a quote from Michael Motion in there, which um, I'm going to paraphrase because I'm not going to click through for things. Um, but that's really worth reading. Um, this is a recent quote from Michael Motion about contact juggling, which is not a thing that exists because he doesn't talk about it. He's like, I said everything that I needed to say about it back when I didn't perform at the IJA in Montreal, all this kind of stuff, like he's done with it. But in this, he talks about how he, he does kind of, in fact, is it, it's even worth, have you got that there, Dawn? Do you have that? Um, actually, ah, I've got it here. Ha, 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 I can prepare. Yeah, I don't um, have, I can copy it into the thing if you want. Yeah, I just like, this is a quote. So Michael Motion, um, talking to Brad Weston. If people want to be interpretive artists on someone else's creative efforts, they should at least understand that process. The process isn't a commodity, something for sale that you buy. Um, yeah, so, so he's saying, I gave up a great part of my life for this exploration. I respect others who do the same. And I cringe when I see someone who has simply stolen a technique. And I find that really telling. And I feel like 
to some degree, maybe I'm reading into it, but there is a respect there for people who have dedicated themselves to the process rather than just taking what, what from his point of view, taking what he did and throwing it back out there. So, um, yeah. Yay! I think that's a good place to um, end this, this portion, um, like the, the what, 100 minutes that we just did, and uh, end the recording. Um, this will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, so uh, please check it for that if you have any questions. And thank you all for coming. I'm going to hit the stop recording, and then I'm going to say bye to you all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We love you. Bye. -bye.